I'm the founder of an unconventional street marketing firm that is using sustainable and innovative forms of natural media to produce indoor and outdoor advertisements that have a lower impact on the environment and a higher impact on the audience. It's an industry that in seven short years has grown from just a handful of players to almost 100 today. Before that, I was in the traditional advertising industry, 25 years. My father before me was also an ad man. He was a madman. The advertising industry has fed me, it has clothed me, it has educated me, and it's put a roof over my head for my entire life. The advertising industry is very, very near and dear to my heart, but it's also an industry that I'm incredibly disappointed in, and here's why. <clears throat> There's nothing like having children to make you wonder about the world that you're going to be leaving them. Ten years ago, I became involved in the sustainability movement. And in those 10 years, I have watched as almost every industry has embraced this concept. Every industry, that is, except for the advertising industry. And that's just disappointing. Because what other industry is poised to play a positive role in sustainability than the advertising industry? I mean, after all, we have spent billions and billions of dollars in the last few decades, perfecting ways to get us to try new things and then to reinforce that behavior so that we do it over and over again. We have so much to contribute, but we don't. Why is this? It's because there's very little awareness of the negative impact that advertising has on our environment. And when I go out, and I talk to my friends and have a beer, my old colleagues, back in the old traditional advertising world. I ask them, guys, why is this? And they say, ah, Jim, time out. Put their arm around me and say, man, let the sleeping dogs lie. Or another thing that they often say is, hey, we're here to make money. We're not here to save the world. Well, shame on us. So I left the industry pretty pissed off, big chip on my shoulder, and a lot to prove. Ten years ago, this journey began, and it continues right here. And I am so thrilled, and I am so honored that the TEDx work team invited me to come and share, spread an idea with you. Now, this idea may well change the way you look at something that you probably are not very fond of. Something that you combat and are forced to look at every day. Something that no matter what you do, it keeps coming back. And no, I'm not talking about advertising. I'm talking about something that might become our single biggest weapon against urban degradation, while at the same time, something that could generate millions of dollars in revenue. Today, I'm here to talk to you about dirt. Good old, grimy, filthy, nasty dirt. Our cities and our towns are dirty. Our public spaces are dirty. Right? And I'm not talking about litter. I'm talking about grime. I'm talking about dirt. Good old dirt. The rains aren't washing it away. Some of it has been here for a really, really long time. So our towns and our cities are fighting a losing battle against dirt. Dirt is everywhere we look, and there is a lot of it. So my poor wife, we came here a couple days ago, and we've been going out at evening, having our little stroll, holding hands, and she's looking at the campus, taking in the sights, enjoying it, a little mini vacation. And I'm looking at the dirt. <laughs> and I'm touching the dirt. And I'm taking pictures of the dirt. I'm talking about the dirt endlessly. I love dirt. <laughs> it's my friend. It's my hobby. And the best thing about it is it is my constant companion because it's everywhere. My poor wife thinks that I'm finally losing my mind. So our cities are dirty. 
And our cities cannot afford to keep themselves as clean as they would like to be. And given the economic situation that we're in right now, rightly so, because it's better to be spending our precious tax dollars on education, on public transportation, on health care. However, the dirt isn't going to go away. In fact, it's just going to continue to keep building up until we find another way to deal with it. Now, I like to say that I left the advertising industry, but I didn't. It's still my business. I know what the pain points are for advertisers. And right now, they have a really big problem. It's called advertising fatigue, and it's getting worse. Because advertising is just not as effective as it used to be. Let's do a little test. So in the last week, all of us probably drove by, rode by, walked by hundreds of outdoor advertisements. So just take a second and think to yourself, what do you remember? What do you recall? Because I'm a big fan of outdoor advertising, and I am hard-pressed to remember even one. In 2013, advertisers spent around $10 billion on outdoor advertising. That seems like a huge amount of money for something none of us seem to be paying much attention to. We used to think that our brains were like sponges, but what we found out is actually our brains are com very complex filters, and they block out everything except those things which interest us, which surprise us, which intrigue us, or somehow relate to our needs. So advertisers are looking for new ways to talk to us. Unconventional ways that are going to grab our attention, make some kind of an emotional reaction. So we'll talk to our friends, tell them about how great these brands are. Because the goal right now for most brands and advertisers is to create a long-term relationship with us. And the ultimate for an advertiser is to, to reach this thing called brand love. Because these days, we are buying more and more from the brands that we like, brands that we relate to, that share our values and our principles. Winning our hearts is replacing hawking products. So now you're thinking to yourselves, what? This guy comes down, he's talking about dirt? He's talking about advertising? What in the world? How do you see things go together? Well, isn't that what innovation is, where you take two existing things that don't really belong in the same place, you put them together in a new way, and voila! You have a new idea. So, enter reverse graffiti. This is a phrase that was coined by a guy named Paul Curtis, Moose, from right here in the UK. He is the master of the modern reverse graffiti movement. Reverse graffiti is a very, very simple form of street art. It's actually quite old. The first person who wrote, wash me on a dirty car, was the first person to use reverse graffiti as a communication form. It's perfectly suited for outdoor advertising. And it's already being used by major brands, small businesses, NGOs, and governments all over the world. Now, reverse graffiti is pretty simple. What we are doing is we're creating a contrast between the original color of a surface, in this case, it's a very nice yellow sandstone, and the dirt that's accumulated on top of that surface. So the dirtier the surface, the better. You see, dirt can be good. In essence, all we're doing is we're selectively cleaning a communication message or an image out of the dirt using only water. There's no chemicals, there's no soaps. Templates that can be made out of recycled materials and a power washer. No ink, no paper, no plastic, no vinyl. We're not using any electricity to backlight or frontlight our ads. And we generate very little waste. It's not perfect. We still have an impact on our environment, but that impact is far lower than traditional outdoor advertising. So let me show you the magic. You know, so what we're doing is we're taking a template, we put it on the ground, and we're spraying it with a little bit of water. We're not hurting the surface, we're not, de we're not defacing the surface, and it looks like we're using a lot of water, but in fact, we're using one-tenth the amount of water that it takes to make a piece of paper of the same size. And what you get in the end is, whew, a clean ad. What's amazing about the last seven years is working with big brands and governments, our industry has proven 
that we can monetize dirt. How cool is that? So our cities manage a huge amount of dirt, hundreds of times the amount of potential media space, dirty public space, than all of the other media companies combined. It is a huge, huge asset that we could be using. So how does it work? The first thing we would need to do is go out and establish a portfolio of available reverse graffiti canvases that we could offer to advertisers for a specific period of time. In this case, it was a sidewalk in front of the Globetrotter store in Hamburg, Germany. Working with an amazing artist named Drew Brophy from California, we produced a 100 square meter sidewalk mural for Keen Footwear. This is a branded sidewalk mural. It's different than a, than a billboard, and we relate to it in a different way. It's perfect for content marketing, and it has huge storytelling opportunities. And my favorite story about this campaign is that indirectly, Keen Footwear provided clean drinking water for 10 people for 15 years by investing in a water project with us. Now, that's a story that people like. We make an advertisement here, and we make somebody else's life better there, where clean drinking water is really an issue. People like that. This is how you create brand love. After a period of about four weeks, we came back, and we completely cleaned the sidewalk. Power washed it. I mean, we used their sidewalk, so in return, we came back, we cleaned it, and we left it in a better condition than when we came. So what do we need to get the ball rolling? Well, first, we need forward-thinking and open-minded government city officials. We need open dialogue. We need to talk about this. There are some very, very valid concerns. But if we know what those concerns are, we can solve them, as long as we're willing to work together. We need advertisers. They're the money. But we're looking for advertisers who are looking for new, unconventional ways to communicate with us. Advertisers that perhaps have sustainable ambitions themselves, products, services, but also want to be involved on a more local level, while at the same time, and this is key, adding value to their brands. Creatives, painters, illustrators, you will be the next ones to create a reverse graffiti masterpiece. This is a completely new form of media, and very few people have really utilized it to its fullest potential. It's kind of like the first early days of MTV. It's wide open. Nobody has done it. It's really cool, but we don't know where it's going to go. We need power washing equipment. Great thing is, power washing equipment is everywhere. There's thousands and thousands of commercial cleaning companies out there. And our cities, they have huge fleets of cleaning equipment. These are expensive assets that we could put to work when normally they're sitting idle, parked in a garage. And we need you, the crowd. You know, the beauty of TEDx is that as of this moment, this is not an idea from Jim Bowes. This is our idea. And we can all contribute to it. I have one set of perspective. I have one set of knowledge. I have one set of experiences. But imagine what will happen when you, the people, with different experiences and different perspectives, start adding, making this thing better and better. I have a feeling that in the next couple of weeks, you're probably going to be walking by some really great dirt. So please, take out your camera, your phone, take a picture, and send it to me. You can help me start to build this portfolio. For seven years, I've been out doing a lot of reverse graffiti, getting a lot of mud in my teeth along the way. So I've had the chance to talk to people. And there is an overwhelming positive feedback that we're getting for what we're doing because this is a super simple, very, very tangible example of sustainability in action. So if you like this idea, even if you say, well, I'll tolerate this idea, 
talk about it. If you know public officials or creatives or advertisers, plant the seed. Because in the last two or three years that I've been going around and talking to city officials about this, they have a big worry. And their worry is that the public is going to have a negative reaction to us cleaning communication messages out of the dirt. And that has just not been my experience. But yeah, I'm a company. They won't, may not believe me, but they will believe you. So please, talk about it. Let's start the discussion. We can create amazing images out of our filth, out of our grime. Dirt is a fantastic canvas to work in. Reverse graffiti has a low impact on our environment and it has a higher impact on the audience because we are noticing it, it is different. And in many cases, reverse graffiti as a medium becomes part of the message. The new natural media industry that sprung up has placed thousands and thousands of these ads in cities around the world. This is a proven concept. This is not new. We can make it better, but it's proven. I believe that advertisers do care because at the end of the day, an advertiser is just a person like you and me, and we all want to be part of the solution. This idea will allow advertisers to use their advertising and their CSR budgets to fund public works and increase the value of their brands. We need to stop looking at our dirt as a problem. It's not a problem, it's an opportunity. We need to stop looking at it as a cost we cannot bear. And we need to look at it. We need to look at our space as this amazing communication canvas that's worth millions, if not billions of dollars that we can invest into our cities and into our local communities. And scalable. Talk about a scalable idea. Dirt's already out there. The creatives are out there. Power washing equipment is out there. It's not going to require a big investment. It's not going to require that we change the infrastructure in our cities and our towns. It's ready to go. We can start this today. It's just going to take leadership. It's going to take some vision, and it's going to take the courage to try something new. Because when you step back and you look at our public dirt, what you see is that it's not a problem. It's a huge, valuable public access. The public space belongs to us. We're paying for it. So why aren't we earning from it? I say, let's make and take our dirt, our grime, and our filth, and put it to work for us. Thanks so much.